Hi, it's Coley. Welcome to my kitchen. You guys usually don't see this much of my kitchen, but I'm trying a different video format as a little bit of an experiment. I wanna see how you guys like it. So these videos are gonna be a little bit longer format, actually <laughs> a lot longer format. It's gonna be a lot of me just like rambling on about <laughs> the recipe and my life, but there's gonna be a lot more information, a lot more tips, and hopefully a lot more fun. So hopefully you can sit through the whole thing. I definitely wanna get your feedback at the end. Uh, but why don't we just get started? We're gonna make one of my favorite recipes of all time. I've been making this probably longer than I've been making anything else in my life. And that is meatballs. Good old Italian meatballs. So to get started, I'm gonna open up a bottle of wine. I'm talking red wine. Why are we starting with wine? Because we always have to drink wine when we make meatballs and any kind of traditional Italian food. Um, look, it's just the rule. I didn't make it up, I just follow it. So pour yourself a glass and follow along. Let's have fun. Bottoms up. All right, let's get started. Meatballs. So where do we begin? Breadcrumbs, very important first step. These are Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. I don't always use these, but uh, I happen to have them on hand today, so that's what I'm gonna use. You do get an extra oomph of flavor in there. They're seasoned. Sometimes I use day-old bread if I have that laying around. Now here's the other thing with this recipe. I don't think I've ever measured in my entire life when I've made meatballs. I'll get a fully written recipe for you guys, don't worry. But you want, I guess this is about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Next up is really important, milk. Whole milk is best, it honestly doesn't really matter though and you just wanna get it moist. You just kinda want like breadcrumb milky mush. Seems sort of weird, but it's gonna make the meatballs really moist and tender. Can you see? You can kinda see, I don't know. That's the problem with this format is I like you guys to get a close up of what's in the bowl and it's kinda hard to do it this way. Next up, cheese. You can use Parmesan, you can use Pecorino Romano, you can use both. I'm using Pecorino, Pecorino Romano, brand name Locatelli. Does it make a difference? Personally, I do think so. It's really, really sharp. It's really, really salty. And I think it gives the meatballs just really awesome flavor. Use whichever one you have at home. You use whichever one you like the best. Just use a lot of it, okay? Lots and lots of cheese is the key to really good meatballs, like three quarters of a cup, maybe even a little more. Next, an egg. Nothing special about the egg. Doesn't have to be brown. It can be white, make sure it's a large egg, but honestly, whatever you have, it's, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. Next, salt, definitely important to season uh, the meatballs. It's hard to tell exactly how much you're gonna need. I would say maybe three quarters of a teaspoon, maybe a little more. I tend to go heavier on salt. That's just how I do it. And then our aromatics. I have garlic and an onion. This is probably like the tiniest onion you've ever seen. That's because it came from my garden last year, and yes, it's actually still in good shape. You only need a tiny little bit. These onions never actually formed correctly, so they never got very big, but they still serve a purpose, and this is definitely one of them. Um, you don't want a lot of onion in the meatballs, but you do want some. It gives it flavor, but it also gives it moisture. So I like to grate them in with a microplane grater. Now you'll find the garlic is gonna be a little easier to grate, of course, that falls apart and dips in. Um, do the best that you can. Watch your fingertips. This is, <laughs> this is not working the way that I wanted it to. And if you happen to have a chunk fall in, it's not the end of the world. Now the onion I find is a little bit harder to grate. I don't know why. And you don't want much. It kind of makes this like oniony pulp. You're looking for about two teaspoons maybe? It's not exact. You don't have to be super exact here. Next up, just a little bit of parsley, not a lot. Make sure you wash your parsley first. It always kind of has some grit on it. And I'm, I'm picking the leaves away from the stems. To chop herbs, this is a really good tip. So take them all and bunch them up as best as you can. You wanna get them into like a tiny little tight bundle. And then take your knife. You want a nice sharp knife, it's always key. So just run your knife through and try and cut as many times as you can. Like try and make really, really thin slivers. This I guess technically would be somewhat of a chiffonade. Um, but then we're gonna go through with our knife again and just really like just mince the crap out of it. And so into the bowl. And now this step is really important. You wanna mix all of this first before we actually put the meat in. 
That's because we don't want to overwork the meat. And I'm going to add a little more milk because you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can feel that the little breadcrumb pieces have gotten, they've absorbed all of the milk and they've gotten a little bit hard. So in order for them to correctly mix in with everything, I need a little more milk. And just use your fingers. This is not glamorous. You can't do it any other way. It's a fact. You cannot. You cannot try and do this with a spoon. You could maybe try it with a fork, but like, come on. I need a little more milk. Let's say I ran out of milk, or let's say the milk was bad. Um, I would use half and half, because we always have that on hand. If you didn't have any of those, like, don't go and use almond milk here. It's like, just stop. Don't, don't do that. Um, use water. Water will serve you just fine. So now you see we have this like paste. See that? Good looking stuff right there. Make sure it's as homogenous as possible. If you have any chunks of these breadcrumb bits, make sure you smooth them out because they're gonna wind up staying in your meatball and you're gonna get these like chunks of breadcrumbs. No bueno. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next, of course I forgot this step. I should've done this a long time ago. I'm gonna preheat my oven because, yeah. I bake my meatballs. I don't fry them. Um, some people think that's crazy. I'm telling you, it's the way to go. Frying meatballs sucks. It takes forever. They're hard to turn. They stick to the pan. They lose their shape. They, I'm just not a fan of frying meatballs. It takes so long. Oil splatters all over the kitchen and I don't think it makes a difference in terms of flavor. So what I do is I heat the oven up really hot. I put it at 450 degrees and it basically sears the meatballs on the outside. I turn them once so they get a little bit brown on both sides because the bottoms will get a little more brown. And you know what? You would never know the difference. They're so good and it, cleanup is so much easier. It takes so much less time. It'll change your life. Now let's talk about the meat. These are meatballs. I have a mixture of beef, pork, and veal. It's kind of the traditional mix for meatballs. However, it's not traditional in my family. Um, my mom just used beef. My grandma just used beef. My aunts, my uncles, everyone just uses beef. So why do I use this? Um, I think it tastes better. I grew up with just the all beef meatballs, and they're great. Like my Aunt Ange, hello. She has a thing about <laughs> mixing her meats. She doesn't like to mix her meats. I don't have a problem with mixing my meats. I like the beef for the meatiness. I like the pork because it gives a little extra fat, kind of softens it up texture-wise, and pork has amazing flavor. And then the veal, the veal makes these just a little bit buttery. You can use just beef and pork. You can use just pork and veal, beef and veal if you don't eat pork. Use whatever the heck you want. They're your meatballs, they're not mine. But use good quality meat. I got this from our butcher shop here in Brigantine, Ernest and Sons. My guy Mel, he hooked me up. Um, it's all been ground together, it's freshly ground. I do think it makes a difference, but use whatever you can get. I sound like Ina Garden, where I'm like, huh, if you can't get uh, freshly ground Parisian unicorn meat, just use the best meat that you can find. But it's kind of true, like, sorry, not sorry. Okay, we don't want to overwork the meat. So be pretty gentle, but we obviously want it to be completely combined and homogenous. I'm gonna turn my sauce off. I do have homemade sauce working because we are eventually gonna submerge the meatballs in there. Some people like to put the meatballs straight into the sauce. I think that's crazy. I think you really wanna sear them first. They hold their shape better. Um, and I like that they get a little bit brown. I think they have better flavor that way. I also uh, should mention that I started with somewhat room temperature beef like you, or meat. You shouldn't let your meat sit out for super long, but um, when you start with it really cold, A, it makes your hand really cold when you go to mix it, but B, I find it just mix up, mixes up better this way. Set that aside, and now I'm gonna get a sheet pan ready, and we'll start rolling these out. Okie dokie, very important. You wanna line your sheet pan with parchment paper. I do this a lot when I bake anything, um, especially important with meatballs. Sometimes I say it's optional, I say it's not optional here tell you why. Hang on. If you do not use parchment paper, not only will your cleanup suck, your meatballs will stick. It's had it happen a thousand times, <laughs> so take my word for it and just use it. It's insurance, and like I said, it makes cleanup so much easier. 
because all you have to do is lift this up, throw it away, the pan underneath usually stays clean. I have a little tip for forming your meatballs. You wanna get a little bowl of water. By using wet hands, it's gonna help you form your meatballs a little bit easier. Otherwise, they're gonna stick, especially if your meat is more on the room temperature side. If it's cold, it's a little bit easier to work with, but ours is room temperature, so it's really, really sticky. Now, size. Size does matter. No, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> I like a nice big ball. Uh, you can make them whatever size you want. So you can see how they roll up nice and smooth. You don't have to get them perfect. They are gonna flatten out a little bit on the bottom as they cook. Because we're using parchment paper, which is non-stick, you really don't need olive oil or anything else in the pan. And because there is a good amount of fat in here, they are gonna continue to render out their fat as they cook, which will make them stick even less. So cool, I did all the meatballs. My oven's preheated. I'm gonna space these out a little more just because I can. So get these into the oven. 450 degrees, hot, hot, hot oven. Okay, it's been about seven or so minutes. I'm gonna take the meatballs out of the oven and give them a flip after I sip my wine. Ooh, it's a hot oven. It's melting my eyelashes. Okay, so let's take a look. You can see pretty nicely brown on the bottom. Can you see that? It's got a decent sear. I would recommend doing this with a pair of tongs. All right, just saying. Don't hurt yourself. Um, I like using my hands for everything, so this is just easier. I can feel, oh, how supple and tender these meatballs are. So flip them over to the other side. We'll let them cook a little longer so they can sear a little bit more. They're a little hot, not gonna lie. All right. Back into the oven, and I'll meet you back here in a few. Meatballs are ready to come out, so let's see. Boom! Look at those beauties. <sighs> Love them. All right, I'm actually gonna use tongs this time because they're like extra hot. Let me shimmy things around so you can actually see what I'm doing. Can you see that? Kinda, that's the problem with shooting like this. I'll stop talking about it. Now it's time to drop the meatballs into the sauce. So look, they got browned on the other side. They're brown on two sides. You're not gonna get any better with frying. I'm sorry, you're just gonna cause yourself aggravation and a headache. So you can see they're like dripping juice. Some people like to take all of those juices and add them to the pot. I don't really do that. I find sometimes it makes um, the sauce too greasy. And they're all in. And then this last guy here, I'm gonna split him in half just to do a little quality control. They're perfect. Did I expect any less? Give the balls a stir. You want them all fully coated. And we'll let these simmer on low, 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 low heat. We don't want it to boil at all. We barely even want it to simmer. It, they really don't need that long to sit in the sauce. They're fully cooked. Um, it's really just to flavor the sauce and to flavor the meatballs. And they're good to go. So I'll let these hang out for a little bit. And we'll come back and I'll show you how I like to serve them. Okay, so the meatballs have been simmering for almost an hour. Let me taste the sauce, make sure that we're good. Oh, we're good. We're real good. So let's plate these up. I don't always cook my meatballs with pasta. Believe it or not, in Italy, it is not traditional to serve meatballs with pasta, spaghetti, ever. That's totally an American thing. Um, they serve their meatballs on their own as is, and I found over the years, I kind of like it better. They don't need pasta. They're substantial enough on their own. I like to serve them with a salad. I know it might sound weird, but a couple of meatballs, a little bit of salad on the side, it's a great meal. There's no need for the pasta, and you're talking to someone who loves pasta, okay? It's just me and Chaser tonight, and I don't quite feel that it's necessary. So just for the sake of making these pretty, um, I'm just gonna plate five of them. Little extra sauce, always extra sauce, never a bad thing. And now this, okay? This is where it really gets good. So ah. you have to put a little cheese on top, of course. I mean, what insane person would not put cheese on top of their meatballs? And not just grated cheese. 
ricotta cheese. This happens to be homemade ricotta, and this is something that I feel really strongly about. I do have a video on how to make this. It's really freaking simple. It sounds like it's not, it sounds like it's this whole big song and dance of making your own cheese at home, but I'm telling you, two ingredients, a couple minutes, it's so easy and it's so worth it because it's so freaking good. And in my family, we always say, you gotta have ricotta. So put a nice little dollop on the side and then you can never go wrong with a little bit of basil. It looks good, it tastes good. Oh, it smells good. Nestle that right in. See? I hope I made my family proud. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this new longer format video. I hope you liked it. Chin chin, and I'll see you next time.